some social activists, including Simpua Dan, declaring that they would never actually buy this book. Well, that's former True Love editor Larat Shabalala's book titled The Way I See It, The Musings of a Black Woman in the Rainbow Nation. Well, the, the book, though, guarantees to offend, and it definitely does that, given the uproar. Well, now she joins us now to tell us more about the book. Larat, good morning. Welcome to Winning Land. Morning, morning. Clicked yeah, a couple of days, hey? I know it is. It has been. It has been. <laughs> I need to ask though, what inspired this book when you decided, okay, I'm going to pen down all these different, about all these different topics and put it all in one book? Do you know, Lebo, I mm. actually had no aspirations of being an author because mm -hmm. I've, I've been a magazine writer mm. and, and editor all my life. Um, so when I was leaving Saturday Times Lifestyle, which I edited for four and a half years, yeah. I wrote a column called The 15 Things That Black People, I mean, that uh, White People Should Know About Black People. Yeah. And as a result, Penguin asked me to write a book. So I said to them, I will write it, but mm. I want to write it in the way that I speak. You know, I don't want to write it from here. Yeah. I want you to hear me when you're reading the book. And I wanted to be able to curse because I curse in real life. Not in TV, I'm not going to do that right <laughs> now. <laughs> so that was kind of the inspiration. Mm. And there's, there's so many things that you touch on. And I feel like there was still more yep. that you couldn't include in the book. Yep. How did you then decide... Okay, we'll touch on selfies. We'll talk about, you know, growing up, colligationing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. All those things. Was that a difficult decision? Though? It was. It was. Because it was my first book and I wanted to talk about almost every part of South African society. Mm -hmm. It was kind of narrowing it down mm -hmm. to the things that everybody could relate to. So I thought, okay, well, love is a theme. Money is a theme. Society is a theme. Mm -hmm. Social media is a theme. And then I tried to work around that. Oh, and friendship too. Yeah. You know, friendship is a real thing in this yeah. life. Yeah. You know, the... When I first started the book, I, I, I must say I was one of those people that when the uproar came, I was like, okay, I must read this. Like, oh, let's see what's going on. <laughs> let's see what this is. And for the first couple of pages, I was kind of waiting. Okay, can she offend me already? You know, because <laughs> exactly. it says you're, it's guaranteed to offend you. And then, okay, and then it goes, it goes, it goes, it goes. And then the bit, the controversial bit comes where you talk about the service, the, the service of, you know, the guy was supposed to fix your pool. When you were in that space... Did you then say, okay, but this is a bit where I'm going to offend people? or Because at some point, at the, the beginning of the book, I thought, yeah, but that's how I feel. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I can relate to that. Yeah. And I think a lot of people felt that way. Mm. I think what happened was that be, because you don't understand that Uput Manza painted my, my, my pool blue and then ran away with my money, mm. you won't understand it when you get to that extra. You need to have read the other, the other parts, mm. you know. And a lot of people said, I actually agree with you. But here's the thing. I, I've recognized that the truth is very hard. It mm. lands very hard. And I deliver it harshly in the book. But for most people who've read it, they know there's a lot of humor. I mean, you're laughing, yeah. but you're kind of nodding your head going, yeah. Ish, this is true. I have to point out this bit though, that I disagree with. Um, Which is good. So on I page 77, it says, you know, when someone is proud of you um, and where they come from, their view of the world is that much brighter. But if they know they'll be laughed at because they can't speak English like the Prince of Wales, they'll mostly like pick up a gun, climb over the electric fence in order to get to the flat screen television and family jewels. Mm -hmm. For me, you know, I'm like, okay, but just because people are laughing at me didn't, you know, I don't exactly speak, you know, with an accent yeah. or anything, but people are not laughing at me and I still went to school anyway. Yeah. Where do you see it? I think the sad part about where we are as a society is that intellect mm -hmm. in our country is directly linked to how well you speak English. Mm -hmm. And so part of me saying that is saying people who don't necessarily, who's, who don't roll their tongues, it doesn't mean that they, they, they're not smart. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And that confidence, confidence is what builds people and propels them. And unfortunately, when you're saying to people, if you don't sound like this, then you are not, th that creates a situation where people are not confident. And confident people can go far. And all I'm saying is whether you're saying it in Sutu or Klasa or Tsonga or English, we're all equally as smart. I'm mm. just speaking my own language. Mm. When you put this guaranteed to offend, what space were you in and you know yes it's offended people did you know that you know what actually some people that are just not even going to feel me on this no actually it wasn't my idea to put the sticker on mm. so when the when i just thought i was telling the truth my truth right and then when it, the book went out to the booksellers they came back to my publishers and they said 
we think this needs a warning. Mm -hmm. We think it's going to hit people hard. At first, I was like, really? And now I'm glad. Yeah. And now I'm really <laughs> glad that the stick is on. <laughs> the generalization, though. I think that's the other thing that I also have an issue with in yeah, the yeah. book, is that it's a, it's a generalization, but then... I, I found myself saying, but I do it too Ish. as well. Lynn Nado, That's the you problem. know. Where, where did that come from, the generalization that, you know, it's it's nice I can generalize, but I would never admit that I do it. Only now that you're sitting here that I'm admitting <laughs> that I, that but I do it. But that's the thing. I, I wanted to take uh, conversations we have over at the bride stand. Mm. And those are really general. You know, white people this, black people this, women this, men this. I wanted to take those conversations outward. Because most of us say it. Mm. It's just that not everybody is like me. Naive and stupid to say it and then publish it. Yeah. You know. But ultimately what I wanted to do was to say, okay, so we... we we generalize about each other. When people do that, it's, it's ignorance in, in most cases. Obviously, mm. I mean, we're human beings, so we're all going to generalize in some way. Mm. But most of it is, is, is baseless, you know. And if it is not baseless, then let's ask each other, what can we do to change this about yeah. ourselves? What can we do to understand the other person a lot better? Mm. Because I think that in the interest of becoming a rainbow nation, we hopped and skipped and jumped over a very important part, which was that black people we're really hurt by apartheid. Mm. And unless we address that, we can hold each other's hands and sing Kumbaya mm. all night long. What do you say to the criticism that this is just your way of just complaining? It's like you, put, you had the opportunity to put it in a book. You know, I, I, think that's, I think people are, are entitled to mm. say that. I, I, I've written an entire book where it's just my musings, my opinions about something. So somebody's allowed to say it's my way to complain. Look, listen, somebody asked me to write a book. That's what I wrote about. Is it what's going to land well with everybody? No, but we're all entitled to our own opinions. All right. Well, we wish we could continue this conversation, but time doesn't allow us. Lerato, thank you so much for talking to us. Thank uh, you. Lerato Shabalala. Well, her book uh, is titled The Way I See It, and it's definitely the way she sees it. Uh, the musings of a black woman in the rainbow uh, nation, which guarantees to offend. Well, the book has sparked an outcry on social media trending for two straight days. All right, let's take uh, an ad break. Uh, tweet us at Morning Live at CBC. What do you think? of the book. Let's take a break. Stay with us.